Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Sophie Erber. A South Dakota judge is ordering a crash victim's records be shared. It's linked to the criminal trial of the state's attorney general, Jason Roundsburg. The case is taking a turn. We have the details now in our top story at five. The judge is seeking the health records of the man killed when Roundsburg struck him last year. Judge John Brown issued letters to several hospitals and clinics ordering them to provide the records about Joseph Beaver's psychiatric state. This order comes after Roundsburg's defense team alleged in court that documents say that Beaver's death might have been a suicide. Roundsburg is charged with three misdemeanor charges of careless driving, use of an electronic device while driving, and illegal lane change. His trial is scheduled to start next month. Nebraska State Troopers have returned from their mission at the southern border, where they rode with Texas Troopers as they manage that ongoing border crisis. What that does is it's a force multiplier because now this trooper in Texas has his backup sitting next to him uh, in the vehicle rather than calling for backup 35 or 40 miles away when dealing with the situation. During their 24-day deployment, Nebraska troopers assisted with more than 500 traffic stops and also made arrests for things like narcotics, weapons, and human smuggling, as well as for sex offenses against minors and even child exploitation. We are now just two days away from the official kickoff of Rag Bri 2021 with registration for the event happening in Lamars. The ice cream capital of the world is ready to serve up the start of the oldest, largest and longest recreational bicycle touring event in the world. Trooper Carrie Yaniff expects a large crowd with more than 15,000 riders already registered. She spoke on some of the important tips for riders to be safe out there. Just making sure that they stay on their route, that where they're supposed to be for their designated area, uh, making sure that uh, they're at least, you know, riding with some somebody else. So if something does happen to them medically, at least they have somebody that is there with them, you know, to help them out. Trooper Kerry added that there will be state troopers and even EMTs along that route until 6 p.m. every night. That is to assist with any medical help that might be needed. A construction worker was taken to the hospital today after being trapped by a piece of heavy equipment. That incident happened around noon on Ingleside Avenue. An ambulance transported that man to a nearby hospital. Now, the severity of the victim's injuries is still unknown at this time. Sanford Health is requiring its employees to be vaccinated for COVID-19. The requirement includes employees at the Good Samaritan Society locations as well. More than 90% of clinicians and 70% of nurses already meet that requirement, but others will have until November 1st to do so. Certain medical and religious exemptions will be allowed. Other vaccines, such as the flu shot, are already required. And nationwide, plus here in Siouxland, businesses are struggling to fill their staff. We know this. And the Aquaventure Water Park in Norfolk announced a change now to their hours of operation because of a staffing issue. Starting July 24th, the water park will be open from 1130 in the morning until 6 p.m., closing an hour and a half earlier now. These changes will remain in place until August 8th, and that is when the pool season is over for this year, cutting their season short. KCAU 9's Jason Toktagian sat down with the aquatics manager for the city of Norfolk and brings us more on how they're trying to continue operations as best they can. That's coming up tonight at 10. And it's time now to look at the weather. Another headline tonight, Chief Meteorologist Scott Larson standing by. And Scott, you can feel the difference between yesterday and today. It's really heating up out there across Siouxland. Well, the water park is certainly where you'd want to be on a day like today, Sophie. And that'll be a good destination for the next several days. In fact, as it looks like we're going to link together several days with high temperatures in the 90s. Getting close to that this afternoon in Sioux City. 89, the official high at the Sioux Gateway Airport. 90 in Yankton. Overnight lows look to be in the 60s and 70s throughout the area. So not a whole lot of relief from the heat going through the next few days here. The bottom numbers, those are the high temperatures. The top numbers in white above the blue bars, those are the heat index values. And it looks like those are going to be above 100 on Friday and Saturday. And another spike in those temperatures and feels like temperatures coming early next week. So we'll have more information on the heat coming up in just a few minutes. Stay tuned. Sophie. Thanks so much, Scott. Well, 2021 marks 100 years since Mary Tralia helped efforts to open up a community house here in Sioux City. Tralia devoted her life to social work, acting as the director of that community house for 34 years. That's before she passed away back in 1959. Now, the house continues to strive toward Tralia's mission of empowering communities through service and responding to the needs of Siouxland's immigrant population, as well as celebrating their diversity. 
The Sioux City Railroad Museum hopes to dig up Siouxland history with its latest project. Siouxlanders gathered at the museum today to learn more about an upcoming excavation. State archaeologists are looking for Siouxlanders who will help to dig up artifacts from an old railroad labor camp. That camp was used from 1916 to 1918, so more than 100 years ago. The archaeology team also hopes to find artifacts that tell us more about how the people lived and what tools they used. For Caleb Waples, this project is a neat opportunity. So getting to be out here with like a real life mystery would be really cool. And I think that getting to do this is going to be quite the honor. The project will even examine soil samples to find out what workers ate and drank during their time. For more information about the project, you can visit our website at SiouxlandProud.com. Pretty neat. And we are celebrating a special anniversary this week's Siouxland story coming your way. And Tim is here now to share it with you, Tim. Good afternoon, Sophie. You know, marriage, of course, comes with plenty of commitment and promise. And for one Siouxland family, what started as a simple pledge ended up carrying unexpected special meaning. This is a story of love stretching over 50 years. We met, and I think in 1969, I think it was. And an anniversary not celebrated by a crowd with cake, but rather an eight-ounce can of Coors Banquet beer. We worked together at, at a camp for a year and fell in love, and um, we were engaged on Valentine's Day, and then the next year on Valentine's Day, we got married. Diane and Ed Nesselhoff married on February 14, 1971. Shortly after we got married, we went to Colorado because that's where his family was from and they couldn't all make it to the wedding. It was on that trip that the newlyweds set their sights on a celebration five decades in the distance with beer brewed with pure Rocky Mountain spring water. You couldn't buy Coors any place but Colorado. We pulled out this little can and said, we'll have this on our 50th anniversary. And so it began. Even before there were children, there was that tiny can of Coors Banquet. It always just got packed up and went along, and we just never really thought about it. It was always in the house. <laughs> Probably wasn't 10. Um, my father telling me that he assumes that it had just turned to sludge. So, uh, you know, occasionally I would go and, and shake it a little bit just to hear the liquid flow so as long as long as I could hear that I, I knew it hadn't turned to sludge yet as an ordained Lutheran pastor Ed's commitment took the family and the can cross country it went from Wisconsin to Minneapolis to British Columbia to Rapid City to Chamberlain to Maryland and back to Vermilion that's where Ed served as campus pastor at the University of South Dakota and where the countdown to 50 faced its toughest test in July of 2016, Ed died after a six-month fight with aggressive lung cancer, five years short of cracking that can of Coors. The last few weeks of his life, you know, it was clear that he, he wasn't going to make it to uh, another anniversary. And we talked about a lot of things, but I did tell him that uh, on the 50th, I'd, I'd split the beer with mom. And so it was a, a way to recognize and honor that uh, commitment that they had to each other. And so the countdown continued, the anticipation growing with each month that passed. You know, I don't get terribly excited over a lot anymore, but I was very excited to open up this beer. I think I clarified with mom, it's okay that I open this, right? It was more than okay. And so on February 14th, 2021. We knew it was time to drink the beer. And how would we do this? And then the day of, um, we sat down, we talked a while about dad, about Ed and about our marriage and, and the kids and <clears throat> you know, what, what had happened over 50 years. And then we got out the cores and- And if you Not never hear yet. from us again, it's because <laughs> yes. we have botulism. Yeah. <laughs> This video serves... With cell phone camera at okay. the ready. Okay, so for comparison's sake, I have a new can of Coors. It was finally time <laughs> to make good on that promise made a half century ago. Ooh, look at that. Here's to you, Ed. You gotta drink it all. I thought it was very tasty. I was very surprised. I thought it would be full of crap and... Hmm. 
It wasn't. It tastes sweet. It was really good. Just like author Anthony Hicks once said, youthful pleasures kind of good. last until old age, and then they become old treasures. Ed surely saw this as one of them. The love of his life and son making good on that youthful promise. It was a good way to kind of end that chapter, you know, um, and know that I had to go on. Um, and that's why I couldn't do it any other day. That was the 50th anniversary, and any other day it would be just a beer. But on that day, it was a very special beer. 50 years. The 50 years. Great parents. Thank you. It is a heartfelt story for sure, and I want to thank both Diane and Ben for sharing it with me. And as you might guess, the folks at Coors have taken notice <laughs> of the unique taste test. Diane received some special gifts, wow. including this is a cake, not a can. That's incredible. That's a cake that she received today. So uh, congratulations on the cake and enjoy. And, and the cheers to 50 years, they wrote them right. too. That's amazing, Tim. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks for sharing the story. Yes, and thank you for sharing it with us. We hope you enjoyed that. Immigration is once again a hot topic on Capitol Hill. The latest now on a fight to pass new legislation, plus where all of that stands coming up in about 10 minutes. And we're going to have nine straight days in the 90s with the heat index above 100 tomorrow afternoon. There's also some very small chances for thunderstorms this weekend. The 9 on 9 forecast coming up next. You're watching KCAU 9 News with Sophie Erber and Chief Meteorologist Scott Larson. This is KCAU 9 News at 5. With the hot heat, our uh, moisture seems to have dried up for the most part. We really are a little desperate for uh, actual measurable precipitation, Scott. Right. It's been very difficult to come by out there, Sophie, but we did have a couple of showers happen earlier on this morning, pretty much of the blink and you'll miss it variety. But again, we did have a little bit of rain on the radar. You can see that that traveled through during the morning hours and by the midday, that was basically gone. Just enough to wet the pavement on the north side of Sioux City, nothing measurable at the airport. But again, at about 10 o'clock this morning, we did have some showers that were linked together from Sioux City to Lamar's in Woodbury and Plymouth counties. Checking the drought monitor this updated today, we've had some removal of the extreme drought conditions from southeast South Dakota. So you can see that we've had uh, some of that red removed from the map, but again, still very dry throughout Siouxland, and it remains just a little bit less dry as you move south toward Omaha. Here's the view outside now from the Wayne State College camera in northeast Nebraska, bright sunny skies, and it looks like this pattern is going to be with us for quite a while. Sunny and hot conditions. The temperature now in Sioux City is at 89. We have the wind from the south at 15 miles per hour. Relative humidity is 50% with the dew point close to 70. You can see that large dome of heat over the center of the United States now. 99 is the temperature in Valentine, 101 in Scotts Bluff, 92 in Rapid City, and next Thursday and Friday, but really not cooling off too much. Well, here's a great picture that was sent in from Akron, Iowa, of a red-tinted sunset there. That's because of some of the smoke that was overcast in uh, those Akron skies. If you have a picture that you want to share with us, go to the Weather tab, send us your photos. Yeah, I saw a very interesting weather map today that showed the trajectory of the western wildfire smoke moving yes. and kind of sneaking its way across the country. It's really um, incredible to, to see how far it travels and it's affecting us halfway across the country here, but I think they said it's moving all the way to the East Coast. Yeah, there's a lot of different wildfires that are occurring, uh, as many as 80 at the moment, Sophie. And with the way that the jet stream is right now, it's pushing a lot of it to the north and around Siouxland, but we have wow. had some smoky skies at times here, too. Yeah. All right, well, thank you for that, Scott. And a student pilot had his own skills tested out when he experienced engine failure mid-flight. How he says he survived that scary situation coming up. But first, there's a push for new immigration legislation in D.C. as DACA recipients pled with Congress to create a path to citizenship. The latest on that next. Vice President Kamala Harris hosted a group of DACA recipients at the White House today. That group is pleading now with Congress to pass a legal path to citizenship forward after a federal judge ruled that the DACA program was unlawful. That ruling came down last week. Already the Department of Justice tonight is challenging that court decision and the Department of Homeland Security is drafting a new rule to try and protect that program. We keep getting let down again and again. We will not give up in this fight. Tonight, many Republicans say they are uninterested in legalizing more citizens without first securing the southern border. 
What would you do if your plane's engine died mid-flight and you were behind the wheel? One pilot stayed cool and made a split-second decision that saved his life. What he hopes others can take away from his experience next. A plane engine stops in your area, causing a student pilot to make some split-second life-saving decisions. Pretty cool. And it's all caught on camera. Derek Dillinger talks with that pilot. For as nerve-wracking as this moment could be, Parsley says he was anything but. I truly did not have a, a near-death experience like my life passed before my eyes or anything like that. It was just more like an out-of-body experience, kind of watching it like a movie. Something that, as you can see, was also caught on camera. It was back in May when Parsley was on a trip that started in Concord, a very important trip. It is what's considered a long cross-country flight, which is one of the last steps of getting your license. And it was the final leg when it all happened in succession. Engine trouble, then no engine. Parsley says he thought he had enough fuel for the trip, but he did not. The reality was it ran out of fuel. Parsley essentially gliding and falling. I'm uh, looking for a field here. I'm going to try to drop in. He can be seen shaking in the video, but if he did have any fear, he didn't show it as he took on one big mission, getting the plane down safely. That's where this field in Harrisburg comes in. It's off Pembroke Road. I have touched down. And it served as the perfect spot for the landing. Parsley says the video of his experience is meant to be educational. What happened to him being a learning experience to everyone else. I wanted to help save someone's life, and I felt if someone could learn the lessons that I did wrong, um, it could be extremely valuable. Taking a live look outside right now from downtown Sioux City, Scott returns right after this break with one more check on your forecast. Stay with us. Welcome back. Before we wrap up here at 5, let's check in first now with Tim. He's in the newsroom for what's coming up at 6. Hi, Tim. Hey, good afternoon again, Sophia. Coming up tonight at 6, COVID cases tied to the uh, Delta variant continue to make headlines and also continue to climb across the nation. Here in Siouxland, those who are still unvaccinated are most at risk, and the numbers show that. We'll take a closer look at those numbers coming up after World News tonight. And virus-related concerns continue in Japan as well, where many of the nation's best athletes are gathering. This year's Tokyo Games come in at the most expensive Olympics, with the total cost uh, of the Olympics and the Paralympic Games, $15 billion dollars.